Assalamu alaikum. So we've covered hashes, we've covered blocks, we've covered nonce, we've covered carrying over the data from the previous hash to the new hash, we've covered distributing this ledger to multiple different um, nodes, and also we've covered in the last video um, what kind of data goes into a block. And as you can see, different types of data go into a block. As you can see here, in the first transaction we have here, we had five transactions. In the next one, we had six transactions. Now then we had three transactions. That's, the, that's how block, Bitcoin blockchain works. Not every, not, not every block has the exact same number of transactions. It's down to the number of the, the data that goes into it, how many transactions are in that data, and then you get your own little hash and so on and so forth. Um, and the last piece of the blockchain mining process um, now includes something called the coin base. And this is where the miners get their reward. So we have now, as, as, as you can see, we're trying to build up the information that is in each hand, each block, starting off very simple with what is data and hash. Then we move into data hash and nonce with the block number. Then we move to data hash, nonce, and the previous hash. Then we move on to, then we move on to data, the, uh, the nonce block, previous hash, and the transactions. And now we move on to the last part, which is the Coinbase. The first transaction in every single block is the amount of Bitcoin that the miner is going to get as a reward. That's something the miner puts in himself based on the network and on what's the configuration. So we see right here in the first transaction, number one, that $100 goes to an Anders, which is the guy who, who made this website. Check out the website. It's very useful. And he's got a video as well. If you want to check it out. Um, and he's, he's already mined that one. And then, then and he's always, you can almost say he's given himself a hundred dollars. Then you go to the next transaction. You see that Anders now has trans uh, has given ten dollars to Sophia, twenty dollars to Lucas, fifteen dollars to Emily, and fifteen dollars to Ma, uh, Madiso. So where do you get that money from? From the previous. Obviously, initially he reminded he got a hundred dollars, and now he's used a hundred dollars to give to other people. So 10, 20, which is now 30, and now 30, 60. So he spent $60, and now obviously has $40 left. And is there any other transactions from him moving forward? No. Okay, so um, moving forward, though, we can see that in the next transaction, that Emily gave $10 to Jaxo. Does Emily have $10? Well, she received 15 from Anders. So that's how we know that she has to... We know she has $10 to spend because we can see in the blockchain, in the history, she received 15 And does Madiso have $5 to give Jaxo? Well, yeah, because he received 15 from Anders. Does Lucas have $20 to give Grace? Um, yeah, he received $20 from Anders. So we can see from this third block how much has been given to the next person in line. And we can verify, do they even have that money from the previous block? And that's essentially what happens in the blockchain. When you have a Bitcoin wallet and you want to see how much Bitcoin you have, what it does is it goes to the blockchain and says, give me all the transactions that this person has or that you have. And it will do the maths itself. It will say, okay, you've received this amount and it's given out this amount and this is the end result. Every single time you look in your wallet, your wallet is calculating, you have this much input, that much output, and this is what you change you have left. So let's go to the next one. Um, Jaxo. So Jaxo is now given uh, Ryan 15. So does Jaxo have um, $15 to, to, to give? Well, we can see before that Jaxo received 10 um, from uh, Emily. So therefore, Jaxo, and also he received five from Madiso. So yeah, he does have the money. He received two transactions in the previous block. 10 from Emily and five from Madiso, which means he now can spend the 15 to Ryan. And that, again, that's how Bitcoin works. It looks like, okay, you have this import, this import, you have two transactions in, that means you can spend both of those coins, both of those inputs to now another output in Ryan. And um, uh, Emily gives $5 to Madiso. Does she have $5? Yes, she does, because she received here 15. She gave 10 to Jaxo, which means she has five left, which means she has five left here to give Madiso. Madiso here gave five to Jaxo, and Madiso received 15. So now Madiso is back to 15. And Sophia gave eight to Jaxo, uh, and because Sophia before received 10. 
So now Sophia has two chains. What I'm just doing here literally with you is what wallets do. They, they consult the blockchain that is distributed to everyone and it verifies every transaction that you have received in and given out and tells you how much you have left to spend. And before you try to spend that on the network, um, it will verify if you even have that money to spend. That's another job that the miners do. The miners also check, do you even have Bitcoin to spend? You, yeah, you've broadcasted that you, have, you want to send money, but do you have the money to spend? It checks the blockchain um, to see. And, and again, what's the beautiful part about this is that this blockchain allows you to track where money comes from. So I can see that Jaxo, whatever money Jaxo, he got from eight pounds from Sophia, and Sophia got eight pounds from, from Anders, and Anders got it from, from the blockchain. So you, actually see, you can actually see where and when the path that Bitcoin has taken. And finally, um, we have uh, Ryan giving six pounds and Grace giving nine pound ninety five and the rest of it. You get the gist. So, and with each block here, Anders got a hundred here. He got a hundred here. He got a hundred here. He got a hundred here. And he got and Sophia, she she actually mined the last block. So Sophia, she mined the last block. So she's now got a hundred. So Anders has one, two, three, four hundred. Minus what he gave these guys, which is 60, so that's now 340. And uh, Sophia has 100 plus whatever she had from before. That is the Bitcoin network. It's literally just a record of who took what to who. That's it. So we've actually gone through a demonstration of how the Bitcoin blockchain works. We haven't touched upon private keys and addresses, that's something completely different. But literally, how the blockchain actually works and functions. This is how it works and this is how it functions. Um, I know it's a lot to take in. Maybe we want to go through this video a second time, maybe a third time to try and break down the information that's been, that's been delivered. But uh, rest assured, this is all that Bitcoin is doing. It's not doing anything dubious. It's not doing any interest or it's not doing anything harmful to anyone. It's literally just keeping record who owes what to who. Moving numbers from this account or this address to that address, this person to that person. And you're just keeping a detailed record. But, but this record is distributed across the whole world. And on top of that, it's impossible to go back in the past and edit the data. Because if I was to go back right here and I was to say that Sophia, actually, rather than receiving 10, she received 15 from Andrew Anders. That's now broken the chain of this of everything here. I can see when was the, was the chain broken. And I can see who broke the chain. Pair number A. So this person was the only person that has that chain, therefore he's a bad actor. And the Bitcoin network treats bad actors who try to just fraud the system by, by blocking, them out the, blocking them out of the network. So there you go. I hope you find this, these videos, series, this video series beneficial. Please share and like, subscribe to this channel, check out our, our, our website if you want to learn more about Bitcoin. And we hope Allah gives you plenty Bitcoin. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.